Robinson and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Greetings aeromodelers. This video is going to be a little bit different from the previous ones and it may be the start of a long series and I mean a really long series. Um, you'll have to let me know in the comments whether or not you want me to do this or continue with it because it is quite long and it's it's going to take a while to get to the interesting bits. So, <clears throat> what am I looking at doing? I have in front of me here the plans by Jerry Bates for a one quarter scale chipmunk. Um, the intention being to do it for F4H um, and to do it electric. However, when I looked at the Jerry Bates plans when I first got them two or three years ago, maybe even longer, 2011 in fact, um, there were a few things that I didn't like. There were a few areas that I thought were a little bit uh, wrong, shall we say. The canopy was one area, there certainly were no blisters on the back of the canopy, but as you know with spinach and custard we got around that, we made uh, a new blown sections, so I shall probably be doing something similar. Also the cowl doesn't look right, um, and I've spent a lot of money on getting a glass cowl uh, from Phil Clark at Fire Tracers, but it just doesn't look right to me. The shape just doesn't doesn't look right. So we'll have to do something funny there. Um, one of the I've got several quarter scale chipmunk plans, and I've actually drawn my own one uh, uh, quarter scale five view, having measured uh, an actual chipmunk that that is located fairly close to me. So I know my five view is accurate. And one of the things I've noticed on all of the three three views that you see on the internet and that all of these models are based on is they've got the dihedral wrong. So on my five view, I've corrected that. So one of the things I'm going to do here with this Jerry Bates one is I'm going to correct the dihedral, which means the wing tubes are going to be altered in the ribs uh, and things like that. Also, <clears throat> if you look at the Dave Wormsley plan, which is a very nice one as well, um, He's introduced or he's developed some really neat tricks for making the model disassemble. Um, his, his wing is a one part wing at 103, 104 inches, which is just, I'm not going there. So I'm going to use the Jerry Bates method and split the wing and have a wing tube and the center section and the fairings stay on the fuselage. But at the tail, I'm going to use Dave's cunning plan for making the tail plane removable and probably the, the rudder, although it's not quite so important, but it does alter the length of the model. At a quarter scale, the rudder adds quite a bit and it's vulnerable. So the idea of moving the tailplane and the rudder is to give us a little bit tougher model. If this goes where I want it to go, then I may end up competing. You know, I may take it over to Europe and have a bit of fun over there. So, so that's, that's the intention. The model is 103 inch wingspan should come out at about 18 pounds, 15 to 18 pounds. I'm going to power the model with one of these. This is a Eternity 6364 190kV. The other two that I've got are a slightly higher kV. What this will give me is a slightly higher RPM uh, should I need it. The scale size prop at quarter scale is I think 24, 25 inches, or 24 and a half inches or something like that. So that's the prop size sorted out. And to drive that, I need to be looking at a 10S setup. Now nearly all of my systems and models run on 5S. So what I intend to do is to use two of these 5S. These are quite old ones, but they'll do for size and, and, and dimensions and stuff. So what I'm going to use is two 5S packs, two 5S 5000s, in series to give me the 10S. Now, my spinach and custard and the other chipmunks that I've flown on 5S usually draw between 40 and 50 amps. And at that, I get a good 10 minutes, 12 minutes flight. So by doubling the capacity and keeping the current the same, I should keep the duration the same. So this motor is gonna be pulling between 40 and 50 amps, but it's now gonna be doing it at nearly 40 volts. So I'll get the same amount of duration, but using a double double pack. So if we'll take a look at the real estate that we've got on the Jerry Bates 
chipmunk. I will mount the motor here. It uses a, a, a clamp on or a bolt on hub for the prop. So that will go there. And then it uses a cruciform back plate. And that will go there. And then behind that, the cowl ends on F2, which is behind, just behind F2. F2 is our end of play, as it were. Now, normally you have a box section here and the fuel tank is mounted here and this sort of stuff. So what I intend to do across the cowling, I'm going to put my two batteries. And there'll be two compartments, one above the other. Uh, let's see, like that. Then these will be connected in series and tucked into the cowl. Now it may well be that I've got to actually go a little bit further than middle, so it's a little bit weighted to one side to give me enough room for the wires. I could even do it this way round um, and uh, hide the wires, just stuff the wires behind here. But there's plenty of room for a stack of four. In fact, if I showed you the side view, you'd see that we can actually get a stack of four in here. In that same position. Um, you know the width is fine, not a problem with that, and the height of the model is fine as well. We can certainly get four in there, but I don't think we'll need four. I think two five thousands will do it. And then the, this whole side of the cowl will lift up as per scale, and these two batteries will then slide in like that on separate shelves to keep a little bit of air gap between them. And then there'll be a small plate that you just, with two thumb screws, goes on to retain the batteries. Then the ESC will probably be under the motor in the front, so it's in the airstream. And that's basically what we're going to have. So this is the box that arrived ooh, a few years ago now. <clears throat> oh, it looks like October 2012. So I have had it a little while, actually. I didn't realise that Jerry had done the drawing that long ago. But um, as soon as you drew it and I saw it, I thought, oh, I've got to have that. So I ordered it from Bob Holman in the, in the States and he cut it for me. So if we open the box, this is what you get when you get a, a, uh, a kit cut by Bob. And Bob's very good. His wood choice is usually very good. Um, and his, his tracing is, is usually very accurate. And the, his laser cutting, as you can see here, is um, is really crisp and really clean. Um, so what we've got with this one is a fair bit of balsa parts. Let's lift those out. And then with this plan, Jerry has used a great deal of plywood. Now it's only one, one eighth thick, and you can see it's beautifully cut. Few little burn marks on the back but that's nothing it really is nothing it's lovely and crisp everything is nicely labeled um, and you can see we've got all the bulkheads and bits and pieces in here plus lots of ribs because the root rib and out to rib five apply so um so that's what you get in the kit and you could build it exactly as Jerry says, and it'd be a fine build. I, however, you know me, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute some of these plywood parts for balsa. And it just so happens the uh, model shop leads, who are, I'm a big fan of, um, have just been doing a sale on 1 8 balsa. So I bought 50 sheets of 1 8 balsa for a pound a sheet. 99p to be exact, and it's usually about £2.50 a sheet, so that's a good deal. It'll probably be quite hard, the balsa. I bet you it won't be, you know, really high quality, low weight stuff. But that actually doesn't really matter, because what I want to do is is um, bring the weight down without losing too much strength of this ply. <clears throat> so, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trace out, trace around some of the things, like the, the root ribs, which uh, I probably can't find quickly enough. Uh, in fact I have, there's one, if I can pull it out, that's causing chaos, there we go. 
These root ribs, of which there's quite a few of them, a quarter inch ply. And this must weigh a pound on its own. So what I'm going to do, and if, if you look at, if you compare this plan to Dave Woomersley's plan, and Dave Woomersley is an F4C competitor, so his model is light. And if you look at his, what he's used is eighth balsa laminated with 16th ply. And that's probably what I'll do here. So where we've got all these really heavy quarter ply bits, I'm going to draw around them in balsa and in 16th ply. And then, in fact, I probably won't even use the whole rib. I'll probably only come back to about here. So it's a, a ply doubler at the front of balsa ribs. Um, and that will bring the weight right down. So Jerry says 18 pounds uh, on his website. It says 20. I'm hoping to bring it down closer to maybe 15. Uh, so that's the plan of attack. So there you can see what you get in a Bob Holman kit. I'm also going to be changing the undercarriage. Uh, I don't like the way that uh, Jerry has done it. Um, it's very heavy. It's quite substantial, but it's it's very heavy. Uh, he's using Robart uh, main gear legs, uh, Robart 680 large scale straight fixed oleo struts. And they're quite heavy, but that's not really the, the problem. The problem for me is that they're $99 each uh, from the States. And then we've got shipping and tax and all sorts of other stuff. I have a lathe and a mill, as you know, so I'm going to have a go at making my own oleos for this. Um, the, the problem bit is going to be the linkages. The, there's a scissor linkage and I've never done that before. So that's going to be quite entertaining, I think. So that's the plan. If um, what I'll try and do is maybe do a video every week or two of progress on the build, because I don't really want to show you me gluing A to B. I think you'd be pretty bored with that. So what I'll do is I'll try and make this a regular feature, you know, a bit more work on this chipmunk. But in between, I'll do other videos on other projects. Um, I have got another little chipmunk to build, a little 30 inch chipmunk to compete in the Indoor Nationals in April next year. So that will be another little video segment. So anyway, if you want to put something into the comments as to whether you want me to do this uh, or whether you would you know, rather just shelve this until I detail it. And then when, it, when this is finished and I get onto the detailing of the cockpit and the riveting and all this sort of stuff on the outside, then, then I can do that too. But please put something in the comments and just say, yeah, I, I'll, I really want to follow along or now nah, let's wait for the riveting. So, uh, so there you go. All right. That's it for now. Take care.